What is a weekly work plan in construction? I'm going to explain what it is and how to use it right now on this jam and flip chart behind me. So you've come to the right place. In this video, we're gonna talk about how weekly work plans tie into the whole system, what you always need to have to make it work, and how you can avoid doing it wrong and save yourself so much time. So if you're looking forward to this, you're in the right space, let's go. All right, so we're just gonna jam out right now. We're talking about a weekly work plan. So I wanna to talk to you about how it fits within the last planner system. So the last planner system really has tools that we use, meetings that we use, and certain behaviors of collaboration and commitment and respect. So when I talk about the last planner system, I always say that it starts with a master schedule and the master schedule is to identify the duration and the milestones then the pull plan and the pull plan is to establish a sequence to get trade buy-in to make sure that we have the right durations and to really help everyone to see as a group know as a group and act as a group once we have that we have the look ahead which we will talk about in other videos so you're going to want to check that out and then there is the weekly work plan which i'll do as wwp to get you used to it this weekly work plan is where the trades will collaborate and commit to a plan within a week's time duration. And then we have a day plan. And that day plan is specifically for the day. And then we track percent plan complete. So what we're talking about in this video is the weekly work plan. This is where we're anchored, okay? So in the meeting structure, typically at a bare minimum, if you look at Monday through Friday, Typically, the master schedule is reviewed in a team meeting. And by the way, I'm just going to do M through F here. And let's do 6 o'clock to 6 o'clock, you know, uh, at night. So 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. The master schedule will typically be discussed in the team meeting. The pull plans and look aheads will happen wherever you have them in your what I call a trade partner weekly tactical or your last planner meeting or your weekly work planning meeting or your trade meeting. Hopefully you don't call it a sub meeting, but that's where that meeting happens. Okay. And then your day plan and the tracking of your percent plan complete happens when you do your daily huddle, right? I do them in the afternoons. So when you look at your master schedule, right, that enables you to then do your pull plans, your look ahead planning, your weekly work planning, which then allows you to do your day planning and execute your work. And then if you do the huddles in the afternoon, like I'm telling you to, then you can go ahead and review that plan with the workers the next day. So the last planner system has certain tools and it has certain meeting times and it has certain behaviors. Again, collaboration, commitment, respect, and really the involvement of the foremen who are the last people in your planning cycle. So let's go ahead and talk about the weekly work plan. All right, so we've covered how it ties into last planner and the meetings and the culture. Let me just explain where the weekly work plan comes from. So typically, a weekly work plan will be the aggregation of activities. So you have your activities, and then you'll have the dates and durations listed in the weekly work plan. And what happens is the general contracting team will say, hey, trade partners, go ahead and give me your activities for next week based on the vertically aligned master schedule and CPM, and send me your activities and we will aggregate that and pull it together and then in the meeting review it. Now, there's a problem with this. When you do it this way, uh, not only is this stressful for the foreman, not only are they gonna spend countless hours creating activities from seemingly nowhere, but it's gonna take a lot of time to collaborate and to bring those together and it's going to take a lot of time to review them and you may not have a flow. The ideal way to do this is to merge tact and last planner this way. And this, so I don't like doing it this method. That rarely works and this will always break down when your project gets above about $40 million in overall total cost and you have complex interiors, okay? So what I recommend is that on your project, you follow the tact production system process where you break the project into zones properly and you know exactly what zone you're pull planning. Once you have your zones, you will go ahead and pull plan that sequence and everybody knows what I'm talking about there. I'll link you to other videos about pull planning uh, in the description below if you want, but basically you have a nice sequence for just that zone. That then gets packaged and that sequence becomes your tact phase 
where you have your different zones, okay? And the sequence repeats. So you have zone one, two, three, four, five, and six. And you know that if this activity right here is a trade, you know that that will cascade beautifully with nice trade flow. Now, the idea here is, is that once you have your TACT phase and you're using the TACT production system, you can just filter out your next six weeks for your look ahead, and you can just filter out the next week for your weekly work plan and automatically have the activities, but you're going to have them in a flow from the right zone size, which is gonna make your project go faster, according to a collaborative pull plan, according to a proper look ahead, and you'll have the activities and they will all naturally have flow, which protects the trade partners. So this is where a weekly work plan should come from. Let me briefly talk about how they're formatted. You will always see time on the top. That's common with all weekly work plans. And you will see typically on the left, most industry weekly work plans will have the activities and then the actual durations. So in a Gantt format, you'll see the duration in that matrix. But what I recommend is still maintaining your time by location format. So you're going to have location listed over here to the left, okay? In your, what I call a side legend. And you can either see that uh, according to like, let's say it was zone one, two, three, four, five, six for your interior space. You can either just see a tacked wagon over here that's labeled tacked wagon number one with your actual legend, right? You know what tacked wagons are labeled what, or you could put an activity description behind it. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. The only thing that really matters to me when we're building these out is that in these weekly work plans, you have time on the top and you have location on the left and you're keeping that same format. So your weekly work plan will have different activities in here that are supposed to happen that week. And again, what I'm saying is uh, ideally, you will have really good trade flow. Let's say that this and this are part of the same trade. You'll have that same diagonal trade flow, okay? One thing for the time uh, duration, I would not recommend putting Saturdays and Sundays in these things. It confuses the format. And it also makes us feel like we have a backup on the weekends and we really don't. If you wanna keep really good crew productivity, you're not gonna work them too much overtime, too many Saturdays, too many Sundays. The idea here is this. If you have your trade flow, you also have to make sure that if another trade is working vertically in an area that they're not going to be stacked on top of each other. So can this trade and this trade work in the same location? And can this trade and this trade, if they're the same trade, work in two different areas? And is there any coordination that needs to happen? The other thing you're going to look at in your weekly work plan is, let's say that this activity has to be done before this one happens. Is this a real commitment so that this trade can come behind and actually prepare for that task and that day? Anything that shows up on this weekly work plan needs to be committed to and the trade needs to do the commitment themselves and they need to look at the other trade partners eyeball to eyeball and say, yes, I can do that. I have the resources, I have the time, I have the ability, I commit after they do their collaboration. Now, just like with the look ahead plans, uh, we are looking for different problems. If we have handoff problems or a possible delay or an activity that's not made ready, we really want to use this weekly work plan to vet out their problems so that we can identify, discuss, and solve and enable flow throughout the weekly work plan. The purpose is to make executable commitments from trade to trade and to get the foreman to see and know and act together according to those commitments. So hopefully you're following this process. You've filtered it from tact. So filtered from tact. The second thing that you're going to do as a part of this process is you are going to uh, confirm commitments. So I'm just going to write commit plus handoffs. Okay. You are going to analyze for stacking or burdening. Make sure that there's enough room to actually fit in these spaces. And number four, you're going to find your problems. When you find your problems, you will hopefully be able to solve those together as a collaborative team before they affect the work in the field. So the reason that I really like this is that uh, people think that 
saying when an activity is gonna happen creates flow? Not exactly. The commitments create flow? Yes, kind of. What really creates flow is to really identify these problems, okay? This is the biggest part. If you can know your problems on your weekly work plan, then you can solve them together. Your trade partners out in the field will generally find ways to work with each other. They'll generally find a way to do handoffs, but they typically cannot find solutions by themselves real time in the moment to things that are gonna hold them up. That's why we need to see them earlier and solve them earlier. So the reason I modified this sketch and probably in your eyes made it look all ugly is because these red circles are the biggest benefit of your look aheads and your weekly work plans because getting rid of them will do more to create flow than anything else you can do on your project. Now, if you're looking at this and saying, hey, Jason, I don't think my foreman would ever bring up these problems try this little trick. Set a timer for 10 minutes in your, in your trade partner weekly tactical with your trades or in whatever engagement you have and say, I want everybody, once we've populated the plan, once we have coordinated handoffs and commitments, once we've analyzed for stacking, I want you to spend 10 minutes in each trade, find at least one problem why this won't work. I've usually found that that really does do the trick and gets people to speak up because you're trying to find these problems so that they can be solved and create a commitment for the next week. When you do that, you're going to give them some parameters. Do you have the labor? Do you have the materials? Do you have the equipment? Do you have the permissions? Do you have the layout? Is the space ready for you? Will the handoff be ready for you? Will you be going the same speed? Will you even be in the area? Do you have the capacity? Right? Do you have the resources to accomplish this? And if you don't, it's a problem. And then problems become roadblocks. Roadblocks become things that we solve. Solved roadblocks become flow. When you use this weekly work plan for the actual day planning, you will then come in later and on a daily basis say, yep, I was able to uh, meet that activity uh, day two. Yep, I was able to do that activity. We're good. Wednesday, yep, I was able to do that first one. Uh, but I was not able to do uh, this activity down here. And you'll dig in and find out the root cause of why. You'll dig in and you'll solve it and you'll figure out what it does to the rest of the schedule. This is where your percent plan complete comes in on a daily or weekly basis. You'll say, how many commitments did I make through here? And how many were I act was I actually as a team or as an individual or as a trade partner able to accomplish? And so if you do the math, I always like to do something easy. Let's say you had 10 commitments, okay? And you were only able to hit eight. Um, then the formula becomes eight divided by 10 is the formula and that equals 80%. Now, you're going to wanna hit above 80% percent plan complete when you're tracking your weekly work plans. Things that you'll always wanna consider in your weekly work plans and your look aheads for that matter, you'll always wanna make sure that you have the right sequence that's committed to. You'll always want to make sure that you're maintaining your trade flow from the actual TAC plan. You will always want to make sure that if you have a new activity, that you have a pre-construction meeting scheduled out ahead to set up your quality requirements. That's one of the biggest things that you can do. And then when you do plan these activities and you say, yes, I think I'm ready, you're going to ask yourself two questions. Uh, do I have the circumstances on site, meaning the environment, uh, and do I have the resources from a trade uh, perspective to actually get it done. Those two things, and if you don't have them, they turn red and they become roadblocks. The rules of weekly work planning are no trade stacking, no burdening, and no unreasonable requests, and your trade partners have got to commit with no sandbagging. And if you do this properly, you will have a plan, not only for the rest of this week, but for the rest of next week, that will get your activities done, that will flow, that will prepare activities, that will solve your problems, and that will really allow all the trade partners to work well together and commit and execute their work with a high likelihood for success. So I hope you've enjoyed this video about weekly work planning. It's literally a game changer. And if you need any help, just use that comments button below. We'll help you, we'll send you formats beautifully. This is just a sketch. We have beautiful formats in Intact, in Excel, we have examples from previous projects. We can help you to set up yours so that it is in a frictionless format. And as we close, I'm gonna link you to, down below, our services that we provide at LeanTact. 
where we can help you with your tech plan, your pull planning, your look aheads, your weekly work plans, your format, your graphics. We can design your signage. We can train your team. We can do anything you want so that your team has a really good weekly work plan that you can execute with certainty. Most projects that don't do this with CP and they only use CPM have a 15% hit rate instead of above 80%. It's time to give us a call. On we go.